What showrunner made Ricky Whittle's job so impossible that he had to leave? What cast member got fired for being a KKK member? What did Isaiah Washington do that got him kicked off the set of his old job? Could the 100 have lasted longer if it wasn't for that one stupid wrong move? Lex's death was the end. We know you're dying to get the tea about Ricky Whittle, but hold on for a hot second. We'll get to that next. First, let's talk about Lexa. When Lexa first appeared on the show, fans weren't really sure what to make of her. While we totally dig a fierce warrior queen that can hold her own, Alicia Denham Carey's character was just a little too much for some people. As we moved deeper into Season 3, though, Lexa was a really established part of the show and deserved more than she got. We were happily watching her fall in love with Clark when showrunner swiftly killed her off like it wasn't even a big deal. Fans were not happy. So why did they do it? According to Denim Carey, it was just a scheduling conflict. Talking to Variety, she said, It's incredible how passionate the fans are and that's really why the show is doing so well and why I have so much faith and passion for it in the first place. I had other obligations in my work life and I hope that people know this wasn't a social attack on anyone or any social movement. The actress was probably talking about the fact that Lexa was just one in a long line of LGBTQ plus characters to get axed after striking up a relationship with a character in a popular show. She says it was nothing to do with that, but frankly, who knows? The entertainment world still has a lot to answer for. Apparently, fans were so irritated by Lexa's death that plenty of people just switched off. After that, figures dropped a little from 1.5 million per episode to below 1.3 million and never quite recovered. Showrunners might not want to admit they were wrong, but they should have fought harder for the character. Ricky Whittle left under awful circumstances. In case you didn't know, Ricky Whittle has been on the up and up for years. Before he was a bona fide Hollywood actor, he was starring in soaps back in Britain, where he was born. It took Ricky a long time to get to where he is, and that's probably why he's not going to take any BS. He's earned his stripes. Back in 2016, Ricky's character Lincoln was killed off after three seasons on the series. Lincoln was a fan favorite, so viewers were devastated that it came to this when he had so much more to give. But there was more to it than just creative storytelling. It's usually gossip sites that spill the tea, but in this case, it was Ricky's mama. She took to Twitter to share some home truths about showrunner Jason Rothenberg and how badly he treated her son. After mom got involved, Ricky had to talk about it. He said that even though it was his choice to go, he just got offered a part on the hit series American Gods, he would have stayed if Jason hadn't been so awful. Whittle explained, Jason Rothenberg abused his position to make my job untenable. What he did was disgusting and he should be ashamed. He was professionally bullying me, cutting out all the storyline I was supposed to be doing, cutting lines, cutting everything out, trying to make my character and myself as insignificant as possible. Whittle left and is still smashing it on American Gods, but his problem with the show didn't end there. He criticized Lincoln's ending and Lexa's death too, calling it weak storytelling. As for Jason Rothenberg's take on this, that was just as weak. His statement said Ricky Whittle is a talented actor. I appreciate his work on The 100 and wish him all the best moving forward. Sometimes saying nothing is just as bad as saying everything. Feeling guilty, Jason? Steve Talley got fired for being part of the KKK. There are many, many reasons that actors get fired these days. We hold them to a much higher standard than we used to, and so we should. No one wants a problematic icon on a popular TV show when the part could go to someone that deserves it more. When Raven hooked up with Steve Talley's character, Wick, it seemed like a good match. But then the character kind of disappeared. We didn't even see them break up, we just heard that it happened. So what really happened off camera? You know how much fans love a good snoop, so it didn't take long for someone to find an unverified account belonging to Tally. There was no blue tick, but he was followed by co-stars and production staff, so it was obvious it really belonged to him. Tally clearly didn't attend any media classes in his career, because if he had, he would have known not to post offensive tweets. His account was littered with a ton of shady stuff, from references to a KKK membership to just really racist jokes. No one thought it was funny. As soon as fans dug it up, people started calling for action, and Jason Rothenberg swiftly fired Tally. At least, that's what probably happened. 
Rothenberg said it was just part of Raven pushing everyone away. But we weren't born yesterday. It wasn't natural for Wick to just disappear like that without even a breakup scene. Whatever the truth really is, it didn't look good for the actor. Isaiah Washington has a shady history. Isaiah Washington played the part of Thelonious Jaha in the show and had some really interesting storylines. But this isn't Washington's first rodeo. He was part of the uber successful medical drama Grey's Anatomy for the first few seasons as Dr. Burke. He was one of the leading stars, so fans were really surprised when he left. But here's the thing, it wasn't his choice to leave at all. In fact, he got fired in probably the most dramatic way possible. This tea is scalding. According to the media, Washington got into a heated argument with co-star Patrick Dempsey, and for some reason ended up calling another co-star, T.R. Knight, a homophobic slur, even though he wasn't actually there at the time. Not cool. Washington later apologized, took it back, said he never said it, and it was just a huge mess. The saddest part about all of this was that Knight wasn't even publicly out at the time, but ended up coming out because of what Washington said. Even though it was pretty obvious to everyone else that he was going to get canned, the actor was still shocked when it happened. He told Entertainment Weekly, I'm saddened by the outcome. I did everything that the producers and the network asked me to do. I came back under great duress and stress and thought I was doing the job I was hired to do. I thought that was going to speak for my future at Grey's, but apparently that wasn't the same vision that the network studio had for me. Given the large LGBTQ audience that The 100 has and the progressive storylines that have been on the show, this isn't something producers wanted discussed. All this happened back in 2007, so let's just hope that Washington cleaned up his act by the time he was cast on the series. Wells was a main character. We all know that TV shows tend to be super different from the books they're based on. The 100 is no different. In fact, Cass Morgan's books really don't have that much in common with the show at all. What if we told you that Wells, yep, that guy that was killed by Charlotte only a few episodes in, is actually supposed to be a main character? In the books, he's a big deal and his storyline continues, but in the show he was chopped down straight away. Producers and writers decided to just do what they want, so it's actually in their best interests if fans of the books don't watch the show. They don't want all that negative energy from people wondering why their favorite character isn't getting the screen time they deserve. The CW wanted it to be dark and twisted. The CW has released some great shows over the years, but you can't always say that they're hard-hitting. Gossip Girl springs to mind. So let's just say that the network isn't exactly known for its dark and gritty dramas, which might be why it took on the 100 in the first place. When the series was first announced in 2014, many people thought it was just going to be another teen drama like all the rest. Obviously, they were wrong, but the CW really used it to change things up. They wanted people to be shocked. Apparently, CW head Mark Pedowitz told Jason Rothenberg to go even darker than he wanted to. That might explain why half the characters that live in the books die horribly in the show. The network is using the 100 as a way to redeem itself and get rid of its cute reputation once and for all. Do you think it's working? Eliza Taylor didn't audition. If you thought the 100 is pretty cutthroat, it's nothing compared to Hollywood. Actors try really hard to get the parts that they want. So hard that they usually have to go to several auditions before they even come close to getting the part. If it's a lead role, then it's even worse. And that's why it's so surprising that Eliza Taylor landed the role of Clark Griffin without coming in at all. Other actors had to, like Taylor's husband and co-star Bob Morley, but Taylor got a free pass. Apparently, producers spotted an old audition tape that she had done for a movie months prior and thought she was worth talking to. They called her, got her to come in and read, and she got the part the very next day. That's like winning the lottery a million times over in LA. Is it really fair considering what everyone else on the cast had to go through? Absolutely not, which is probably why you didn't hear anyone talking about it much. Can you see why producers would want these secrets to stay buried, or do you think it doesn't matter? Should Taylor have had to put as much work in as the rest of the cast? Should Washington have never been hired after what he did on his last job? Let us know in the comments.